Hi there. In the next 15 minutes, we will tell you how we started creating a self-service infra provisioning platform, the challenges we faced, and how we stepped up our game in order to build an improved platform we use today. So who are we? I'm a platform engineer that focuses on infrastructure as code and bringing good software engineering practices in the world of system engineering, based on my previous experience as a software engineer. I'm passionate about provisioning fit for purpose and grid software architecture and provisioning. I'm Karen. I'm a software engineer who focuses on DevOps and platform engineering. I try to bridge the divide between development and production. When I'm not busy with infrastructure, I'm learning about Rust and finding budget-friendly ways to run personal stuff on the cloud. Who is Bold.com? Well, Bold.com can be best described as a retail tech platform. Through the help of our 51,000 partners, we are able to offer over 34 million items for sale to serve our 30 million clients in the Netherlands and Belgium. As engineers, you're probably more interested in the technical stats that enable Bold.com to be successful as a business. We migrated from our on-prem data centers and chose Google Cloud Platform as our public cloud vendor. We have more than 3,000 uh, projects in GCP with over 17 GKE clusters. This enables us to serve over 200 IT teams, and to date we've made over a million changes to our infrastructure using our self-service tooling. With that in mind, let's kick it off with how we got started with self-service and the cloud. How does Bold.com do self-service IT? Introducing RTDZ. It's just a backronym for reproducible resource deployment definition. You can think of RTD2 as a web interface that allows you to create GCP products. It is our infrastructure as code tool and allows engineers to provision resources in GCP completely self-service. This means that you can join Bold.com tomorrow as an engineer and use RTD2 on day one with no intervention. RTD2 takes YAML as input that is heavily inspired by Kubernetes. And because the input is YAML, we can support our engineers with the GitOps workflow through our integration with GitLab. That means that you can either use the web interface to quickly get started or hook into Git if you have a more mature project that wants to rely on the GitOps workflow. RTD2 helped to realize Bold.com's journey to the cloud, and we have been using it in production for more than five years. But as with all things, we noticed that RTD2 started to age. It has been increasingly difficult to keep up with the innovation of Google Cloud. This is because we have to implement the logic in RTD2 and, where necessary, create abstractions. It has no community, so even though we use Kubernetes like YAML, our engineers can't make use of Helm or Customize. It is also hard to troubleshoot. You cannot Google your way out of an error, and I'm pretty sure you won't find hits on Stack Overflow about it. And finally, no matter how much Kubernetes or GCP knowledge you have from a previous role, you first have to get acquainted with RTD2 when you start at Bold.com, making onboarding hard. All of this means that as a platform, we have, to, we have become a bottleneck for innovation for our engineering teams. We had a problem and we needed to find a solution. How are we paving the way forward? We've seen that one of the major pain points in RTD2 is abstraction. While researching the market on infrastructure as code tools, we discovered the kept tool and this wonderful quote that summarizes the abstraction issue perfectly. Namely, even a thin abstraction of obstructs the ability to leverage the ecosystem of tools that can be used with the built-in Kubernetes resource types, and it closes the door to other automation. And even though this quote was specific to Kubernetes, we realized it rang true for building a platform for our engineers. So our first task was to evaluate the options on the market. But the more we looked, the more we realized Kubernetes was staring us in the face. This is because of something called the Kubernetes Resource Model, or KRM for short. KRM is a declarative, always reconciling design pattern that all Kubernetes resources follow. KRM also means you can customize and extend Kubernetes beyond the native resources you get with it. If you do so, you have one way of managing different types of resources and you get to leverage the rich ecosystem of Kubernetes. The use of KRM to extend Kubernetes is really a growing trend in, this, in the industry. Let me phrase that in a more concrete way. We wanted a way to not only manage our workloads on Kubernetes, 
but also the infrastructure that we run on Google Cloud Platform. So it was around this time that Google announced Confi Connector. Confi Connector is a collection of custom resource definitions or CRDs and controllers for all the GCP resources one can provision. Confi Connector builds upon KRM and allows you to define your infrastructure as objects in Kubernetes. Confi Connector will continuously reconcile these objects, making sure your GCP infrastructure matches your declared state. If you look at on the example on the slide, you will see that much like you would define a deployment in Kubernetes using YAML, you can define a cloud storage bucket in the same way. All the standard Kubernetes fields are there. Think of an API version, kind, metadata, and spec. This has numerous benefits for us. Firstly, Kubernetes becomes the single platform for both the workloads of our engineers and for managing our own infrastructure. It is similar to representing a bucket in Terraform. The basic idea is to represent your resource in a declarative format and be able to have them saved in a code repository. The improvement over tools such as Terraform is that now you do not need an extra tool next to Kubernetes to manage the resources. The Kubernetes control loop does it for you. Secondly, we are able to leverage uh, Google's innovation power and no longer need to incorporate their updates into custom tooling. And finally, Confi Connector has public documentation online. The source code is available on GitHub and support requests can be directed to Google support engineers. This has a massive benefit for the onboarding of new engineers. And even though Confi Connector simplifies infrastructure provisioning quite a bit, the whole flow still requires significant effort. For example, when using a resource in GCP, one needs to enable the resources APIs, create IAM role bindings, etc. And ultimately, we needed a way to simplify this flow. Enter Kept. Kept is an open source tool. It's part of the Google Container Tool Suite that manages KRM resources in bundle scope packages. Simply put, Kept can package, transform, and deploy your KRM resources. Let's put Kept into practice. Assume you want to make sure that the names of our cloud storage bucket are prefixed with the name of the namespace. With Kept, we can create a storage bucket package that includes this transformation. If you look at the YAML on the left-hand side, you will see uh, the sample storage bucket provisioned by the Confi Connector documentation. On the right-hand side, you can see how Kept has transformed the underlying cloud storage bucket resource. But we all know infrastructure isn't as simple as resource with the resource by itself. We need to ensure that IAM role bindings are configured as well. Here you can see how we offer a storage bucket cap package that includes all the bits and pieces we needed to provision convenience to our end users. Obviously, a cloud storage bucket by itself is not useful. So what we are doing is offering popular blueprints to our engineering community. By composing these resources together, we can create blueprints from cap packages for our Java engineers in the form of microservice blueprints or in the case of our machine learning engineers, we can offer an ML application blueprint for Python workloads and Vertex AI. Let's quickly recap. We are relying on KRM to use Kubernetes as our platform foundation, Confi Connector to provision GCP resources, and Kept allows us to offer building blocks that we can compose into popular blueprints. Our next challenge was how do we lower the barrier to entry of our platform? This is where Backstage steps in. At Bold.com, we are adopting Backstage to be our developer portal in the IT landscape. With Backstage, you can select blueprints to get started. In this example, we are going with the microservice blueprint. First thing is to select a name for our application, give it some description, and select the team who will own it, and finally, select the location for the repository. Under the hood, Backstage will use kept to render the package and apply it to, to Kubernetes. The source code, of course, is also pushed to GitLab repository that we selected from the start. This is all great, 
But you might be asking, what about new GCP resources? Let's say Google just released Data Fusion and you want to store all your training data there. You are very excited about trying it out, but there's no kept uh, package nor a blueprint. What can you do? You can take an existing blueprint and create the Data Fusion Config Connector resources in Kubernetes by referring to the Config Connector documentation. As a platform, all we need to do is make sure that, that an intake has been done for data fusion and the necessary policies are in place. Policies allow us to enforce mandatory legal and compliance guardrails. We don't have time to cover it in this talk, but if you're looking for a policy enforcement engine, be sure to check out Gatekeeper from Open Policy Agent. As a platform, this means that we can deliver new capabilities in days versus months. End users can refer directly to vendor documentation, and because we ditch abstractions, our end users can endlessly tweak the resources, packages, or blueprints to suit their needs. So in closing, did we solve our problem? We are now able to offer different golden paths for our Java and data science communities through blueprints that match their respective use cases. Our end users have the choice of getting started via the wizard in Backstage, or they can apply the blueprints directly on Kubernetes using Gipt. Because the blueprints are ultimately resources in Kubernetes, they are free to examine and customize the resources for their unique situations. We no longer have any abstractions. If the blueprints don't suit their needs, or they want to take the unpaved road, they can directly use Config Connector resources on Kubernetes with the help of Google's documentation. Ultimately, everything is enforced by the same policy engine, and Kubernetes offers a single platform. We managed to remove our abstractions without compromising on security compliance, we managed to lower the lead times on adding new capabilities to the platform. And finally, we are slowly adopting platform engineering at Bold.com. Thank you very much. And please let us know if you have questions.